and it looks cute in plush yarn too. Oh, it's so cute. Hey guys, and welcome to Knit Grit. My name is Cody Lee, and in today's video, we're gonna go over how to make these really cute little tiny strawberries. I made an entire bowl of them because I wanted to show all the different color variations that there could be for this. I think they're super cute. I even made a purple one, and I love the little light purple that I used for the seeds. Super cute, love this like sock monkey yarn that makes it so you don't have to embroider little seeds. And of course, the traditional uh, red and pink, all nice and in time for Valentine's Day. There will be a printable PDF for this free for the first week um after that it'll be three dollars i believe on my ravelry store and etsy if you, whatever one you want to buy it from um at a week from now but for the first week it's free so make sure you get that download while you can um it is limited but if you are subscribed you'll be in the know when i post and do stuff like that next week i'm going to be posting a really cute video on a two-parter actually because it's kind of an intense project on how to make a little tiny chubby T-Rex. And so definitely subscribe if you wanna be in the know when that pattern drops as well. I'm in love with it. I also have a Patreon at patreon.com slash knit if you're interested in supporting the channel in that kind of way. We have different rewards, free patterns, stuff like that over there. We also have a Discord server if you're interested in doing Discord server-y things. It has grown to 267 now. Members on that server, it's kind of insane. We have a lot of fun. I also post a lot of patterns that I need tested or just generally looking for feedback. I did that for this little uh, purple strawberry. So if you're interested in joining a Discord community, we have a pretty great one over there. Links for everything will be down below. Make sure you hit that bell so you'll be notified about the next pattern and all that stuff. That's all the housekeeping for now, but let's go ahead and get started with what you will need. So for this project, you will need a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I'm using my Furls crochet hook. This is a nice ergonomic one. It's one of my favorite. This is the Rose Gold Odyssey, I believe. It's really nice. And uh, yeah, I'm using a 3.25. You can use whatever. If you've got a Bates, you've got a Boys, whatever you've got on hand, as long as your stitch tensioning is right and you can't see your stuffing through your stitches, you'll be a-okay. You will also need some worsted weight yarn. This is enough to get one strawberry done, so I'm probably just going to kill this little tiny ball. It's a great stash buster for this project if you're looking for that. Um, I'm using, uh, I love this cotton. It's a Hobby Lobby exclusive brand, but it is a size 4 worsted weight yarn. I really like this. It's soft and cotton, and I do like using cotton with my amigurumi, so definitely I would go for cotton if you could, but whatever you have on hand, again, will be fine. Just make sure that when you're mixing your colors, you're using the same brand because otherwise the yarns can be too different and you'll get a weird wonky look with your amigurumi. So this one is in, I wanna say it's like Mary Green or something like that. I'll put the, 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 the clip up, we'll have all the specific colors, but I'm having a red color for my strawberry base, white for the embroidery. You do not need a lot. This is a great thing to use your yarn ends on. If you have any white yarn ends, you could do that. And then also this green color for the stem. We're going to start with the fruit base. So this little bottom part here, I'm going to post the pattern up for a little uh, quick screen grab if you want to get that that way. That way anybody who needs the pattern can get it however they want to do it. If you want to buy the PDF on Ravelry, you can do that later on. However you want to go about it. Um, if it's in the first week, definitely use that coupon code down below. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get started. In the beginning, I also forgot to mention the polyfill. You need very little polyfill and a darning needle, and I'm using some quick little snips. All right, so for this, what I like to do is I'm gonna start from the bottom and go up. We are not gonna do the stem. That is going to be completely separate. Uh, you can sew on the stem, but I actually hot glue that on. So if you need hot glue, that is also something that you'll want to get if you don't wanna sew your stem on, on top of your head there. So we're gonna grab our uh, red yarn. We're going to work on our base for right now, and I'm going to create a slip knot. You're going to want to be comfortable with doing a slip knot, working in the round, single crocheting, doing some increases as well, and I also do something called staggering my increases versus stacking them. So I will explain what that means as I go along. I have an entire Amigurumi 101 playlist where I talk about all these different methods. So if you're ever confused, you can go on over there and uh, I will explain those terms in a long form. This is a quicker video. So we created our slip knot. We're gonna put that on our hook and we're going to do our magic ring. The way that I do a magic ring is I chain two. However you do a magic ring is how you do it. So I chain two and my magic ring is that first chain right there. 
So I'm going to go back inside that first chain right there. This is just my magic ring. So if you have a normal method, I just can't wrap my brain around that method, so I do it this way. So I'm going to put four single crochet, and this is our first round. So two, go back inside that same chain three, same chain four, and you'll notice that this kind of blows up just like a magic ring would. I'm going to pull my tail just like so, and now we're going to start working in the round. We're going to go and kind of turn our work and put our hook through the front loop only. I like doing that for amigurumi. If you do it through both loops, it does not matter for this pattern, but I prefer going through the front loop only. So this one right here, instead of both, I just go through the front one only. Oh, no, or split my yarn, that's the same thing. There we go. And I'm going to single crochet one. This is now row two, and then go into the next stitch and put two. One and two. Now we need to do that one more time. We're repeating that twice. So again, single crochet one and then increase one and two. Now you'll notice your work kind of wants to flip out on its flip in on itself because uh, it just does. So I just kind of correct it using my fingers and my nails trying to be gentle with it, but just make sure that that right side is facing on the outside. And now we're on round three. We are going to single crochet one, increase again, but this time we're going to do it for a repetition of three times instead of the two. We want to go from six stitches up to nine. So here we're going to just single crochet one and increase. And again, it's wanting to flip out on itself, so just kind of fix it with your fingers. It's hard because it's so tight on the bottom. But I like how it looks pointed on the end, which is why I do that that way. So one, and then increase. One. And then increase. And that should be our third one. So now I'm going to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. That's nine stitches. We just finished round three. We're going to pull our tail through, just like so. And for round four, we're going to start staggering our increases. Uh, if you've gotten this far, you'll notice in the pattern that it says that we're going to increase three times every single row. So here, instead of doing what we would usually do, which was to get to 12 stitches, which would be single crochet two, and increase, we're going to single crochet one and then increase and then end the repetition with another single crochet one. So again, one, increase, one, and then one more time, one, increase, one. I'm going to move my tail forward and the reason why I stagger versus I stack, um, most people when they're doing amigurumi they're stacking their stitches so they're putting their increases on top of one another. I find that if I stagger them or make it so that they don't line up with each other that it looks a bit more round and also you can't see the stuffing as well so you don't get this horizontal line just kind of going up the side and I like that for this pattern. So now we're on, we have 12 stitches and we are going on to round five. We want to get from 12 up to 15. So we're going to single crochet one, two, three. And then on that fourth stitch, we're going to increase. So two stitches on that fourth stitch. So again, one, two, three, four, and then increase. One, two, three, increase on the fourths. We're going to take our tail and move it along because I'm using my tail as a stitch marker. So again, we're on a row where we want to stagger. Usually you'd single crochet four and then increase on the fifth stitch if you're going to stack it, but I'm staggering it. So again, I go one, two, increase, 
that same stitch one two and then one two increase one two one two increase one two we're gonna move our tail pull out a little bit more yarn move that marker so now we should have 18 stitches and our goal now is to go from 18 up to 21 we're adding three stitches every single round so what we're going to do is single crochet one two three four five and then on that sixth stitch we're going to increase all the way around so one two three four five increase one two three four five and increase Ooh, move that way too long we're gonna move along our tail and now we're on our eighth row and we are going to be working from 21 to 24 stitches this is our final increase round for the fruit body so we're going to go one we're staggering again two three on that fourth stitch we're going to increase and then we're going to go one two three so again that's one two three and increase one two three one two three increase one one two three pull our tail a little bit more move our yarn and for round nine through ten we are going to just single crochet around so just maintaining those 24 stitches all the way around and i'm just going to fast forward through this as i go around and around and around So we're getting to the very end after our two rounds around and now what we're going to do is we're going to decrease suddenly so we're going to be taking this and tapering it in real quick and instead of doing it by repetitions of three we're going to start doing repetitions of six we're at 24 stitches right now so what we're going to do is we're going to stagger and single crochet that's actually in line with that isn't it Oh, I missed one stitch. Oh, I didn't. That, that's where that starts. So we're going to single crochet one, decrease, and how I decrease is just putting my hook through the front loops like so, and single crocheting them together, and then single crochet one. We're going from 24 stitches down to 18. So again, single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, single crochet one, decrease single crochet one if I could get into that loop <laughs> single crochet one decrease single crochet one single crochet one decrease single crochet one and we should have one more repetition so one 
decrease one. I'm now going to take my tail, pull that up, and through, like so. And here, I like to do a little tiny bit of stuffing, but not a lot yet. And what I like to do is for the very first little bits, I like to make a little tiny ball. Bounce the camera for good luck. I gotta do that every single, you know, video. Make it so that it's going into that little tip there. That way it stays a little sharp. I ball it up as best I can and try to make that as firm as I can. Then I make a bunch of little tiny little balls and kind of just let them do whatever they're gonna do. Get cat fur inside of my amigurumi because, you know, that's how I do it. Totally eco-friendly. <laughs> and I'm just gonna keep stuffing until I'm about here. I'm pretty happy with that for right now. I'm just trying to roll it so that it's kind of stiffer and keeping that nice little piece right there. Sorry if I sound a little sick. I'm still getting over the whole that which shall not be named. I'm fine, but I'm still kind of bleh about it. So we are now on round 12 and we're going to be doing a single crochet one decrease. We're going from 18 down to 12 stitches. So single crochet one decrease and don't worry at the end of this row we are going to stuff the remainder so single crochet one decrease if you can hear my cat meowing in the background it's because I'm not feeding her for the fourth time today decrease that's about right single crochet one decrease oh decrease don't split the yarn Single crochet one, decrease, there we go, and we should have two more repetitions, so single crochet one, decrease, single crochet one, decrease. I've also been thinking that I might do a Luna baby cow, and I think it'd be really cute to do um, a Luna baby cow and have it be a Neapolitan. Maybe make one that's just the normal cow, which is vanilla, and then chocolate and strawberry, and then maybe doing one that is legit Neapolitan in all three flavors. What do you think? I think I don't know, the strawberries have just got me thinking about it, and I love it so much. So I might be working on that come spring. So here I'm at the end and I am at 12 stitches. I'm going to stuff this a little bit more because honestly it needs it. It needs a lot more stuffing. We're gonna just put that all through there while I stuff. And keep going. I'm surprised that only one of the cats is meowing because once one starts, usually the other one was just peacefully sitting and usually the mouthier one goes off. Sorry for my side tangent, I'm just waiting for this video to get wrecked by my cat's just deciding it's midnight and it's time for food. <laughs> yes, I am filming this at night. And we're getting there, we're almost there. I might just fast forward through all of this. If I didn't then we'll know. And I think I'm mostly happy with, no, I'm not, there we go. That's a, that's a little spot right there. There we go. All right. There we go. So that I am very happy with. I'm very happy with the shape of that. We're now going on to the very last row. We are going to be decreasing every single one of these stitches. We are at 12 right now and I want that to be six and this is our last row. And here I always try to like tug on it just to make sure that these stitches aren't too broad and too big. So I'm going to go on my second stitch and I do something different on my very last decrease so I would definitely make a note of that. So three, you can do a normal decrease if this is just how I do it. Four, five, and then we have one last decrease, but instead of decreasing it like I did there, I'm going to take that stuffing and make sure it's stuck in there. We're gonna take and skip and slip stitch into the final stitch, giving us that six. So we're gonna pull that through, pull that through, create a little six inch tail right there, pull that all the way through, 
And I know I have this tail here, but I'll take care of that when I cut the other one. We're gonna take our darning needle, and you're gonna think, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. There is still, okay, a little less terrible now that I got the fluff out of it. Uh, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. Um, here, I actually close up all of my amigurumis like this. I take my darning needle and go from the outside towards the center, from underneath the slip stitch. And then I go through every single stitch going from the outside to the inside. Again, Amigurumi 101 playlist has a video on me doing this a bit more slowly in case you are interested in that. I'm hoping to share the pattern and not just necessarily and kind of show the tips and tricks, but not go full depth in all of them. So here I put it through the center of our little hole there, pull that and then pull. And that brings your I'll end here and this doesn't actually matter to look nice because it's going to be covered with our stem very shortly so I'm going to go do that I'm going to cut this right here and then I'm probably going to go figure out why my cat was meowing make sure she's okay and uh, I'll be right back so this is how much we have left after I used that ball. Honestly, I probably have enough to make another strawberry, and I probably will. So I'm going to put this over in my little strawberry bowl, put this over here, and we're going to work on the strawberry top. So the strawberry top is made separately, and I actually hot glue it on. I'm not going to show me hot gluing it on, but I am just going to explain it towards the end. But I already have my green... Uh, Kelly Gold? Kelly Gold. Something something Kelly. I, it, it's green yarn. And I am going to again create a slip knot like so. Put that onto my hook. And we're going to create another magic ring. So one chain, two chain. And not split that yarn. There you go. We're going to go back inside of our very first little chain here. And I'm going to put six single crochet in our first round for this one. So one, two three, four, five, and six. Really big, wide. We have a really big, wide hole here, so I'm gonna take my tail and pull it. And for this, I like to do this for my amigurumi that I know is gonna be kind of flat on the top. I'm gonna to turn my yarn, I'm gonna put my hook through the very front loop like so. We're going to increase each of these stitches. This is row two now. We're going from six up to 12, but I also like to take my tail and kind of work it in with my stitches. You don't have to do this. I just like to do this because honestly, I think it helps make a stronger amigurumi. So we are going to go back inside that same stitch and put an increase. So that's one, two, go into the next stitch, keeping our tail in the front, which kind of works it into the middle of that stitch. One, two, three, well, five, six really at this point. So one, two, and seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, twelve. So that was it for our increasing. We're going to tug our tail just slightly, but put it towards the back. That's pretty much done. I will chop that off fairly soon, but I like using it as a marker so I can get back to the beginning. So here, we are now on round three, and this is when we get all kinds of freaky on the top of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to single crochet into our first stitch of that round. This is a uh, repetition of six again. Then we're going to chain six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Get the tiny piece of cat Loki fur. There we go. Charming go back inside we're going to skip this first chain here and we're going to go into the next one and we're going to single crochet down those five chains we skipped one we made six so that makes it so that we are going to single crochet down this for five chains this is three four five now in the next stitch which is right here we're going to go in i'm going to tighten it a little bit because if i don't tighten it i find that i get a little tiny like 
hole and I don't like it. So we're going to tighten it, try to get it kind of a bit more taut than usual, and we're going to slip stitch. We're going to repeat that five more times. So again, single crochet one, chain six, drop our stitch of course, one, two, three, four, five, six, skip, skip that one, and single crochet down the rest of them. One, two, three, four, five, oh, don't go through both, five, and then we are going to slip stitch, make it tight, like so, single crochet one, one, two, three, four, five, six, skip, and single crochet one, two, three, four, five, slip stitch, single crochet, we're halfway done, so one, two, three, four, five, six, skip, single crochet. Does anybody else just sing song things? I don't know if it's just what's wrong with my brain, but I just turn everything into a song, and I'm sure it's obnoxious to most people. I am very fortunate that my husband is one of those humans that also tends to find that funny, so. And our last single crochet there. You're going to go into it, slip, tighten, go through, one, two, three, four. We need to do it two more times. So one single crochet, chain one, two, three, four, five, and six. I'm going to undo that because I actually split my yarn right there and I don't like how that looks. Let's fix that. So I have one, two, three, Four, there we go, fixed it, five, and six, skip, one, two, three, four, and five, slip, pull your yarn a little bit more if you need it, slip and now we're on our one two three four five we have one more repetition so single crochet one one two three whoop four five six and skip down the five three four whoop, and We're now going to go into this next one, slip, stitch, and here I'm actually going to now cut a decently long tail, like 12 inches. I'd rather have a too long tail than a too short tail. That is my philosophy I live by. So we're going to pull that through, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this one. I don't need this one anymore because I worked it through those stitches. I don't need this anymore, so I'm going to go snip, let it wiggle wiggle. And now I'm actually going to take this, I'm going to put my hook through the bottom from underneath and kind of just wrap it and bring it through, just kind of to make it look a little bit more neat when I go to attach it. And so from here, you need to make a little tiny stem. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our yarn and we're again going to create a little slip knot, like so. This time, we're going to chain five. I like the stem to be just slightly smaller than these little tiny little tendrils coming off the sides. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, pull our tail just to give ourselves a little bit more to work with, skip and single crochet into the next three chains. So one, single crochet one, and again, the last chain, single crochet one. 
And now we have one chain left, and what we're going to do is we're going to slip stitch into that chain, pull, tug, create equal length tails, move this, move that, take this, and what we're going to do is I'm going to take this side right here, the left side, and I'm going to take it, grab this, try to find a good spot for it up here. I like to go where it's like not the widest, so I'm going to go right there and put this side over here. Then we're going to take our other tail. I know we've got like three going, so it's a little confusing and you got to keep track of them. This one's the one that hasn't gone through anything yet. We're going to put that on and I'm going to take this and go adjacent to it, so across, but across the other side of that magic ring. We're going to pull that down, pull that, and I'm going to take these two tails. We're completely ignoring this one over here and we're going to just knot it. Because I hot glue this, I don't have to worry about this later, but that's me. So I'm going to again double knot, and because I did that, I'm happy with that, and because I know that I'm going to be sticking hot glue on this, I'm going to take my yarn and let it just be short like that. Because the hot glue's coming in, I'm not worried about those two little tails unraveling. But if it wasn't, then I would be worried, and I probably would sew this somehow into all the little backs somehow or something so now i'm going to go off camera i'm going to take this little thread here and i'm going to attach it to the top right here wherever i think it overlays the best so probably right around here let it just kind of exist there and i'm going to go hot glue this on and just be happy with it for a minute and then i'm going to come back and show you how to embroider those little white lines on there it's super easy if you did something like this then you are all done after you attach your top but i'll be right back to show you how i embroider all the little white lines on there be right back after i hot glue this on all right so it's the next day and now i have a ton of cars going by so uh, let's see if i can actually get this done um i did my little topper here i also oh my goodness made this plush one while i was waiting for the hot glue gun to like heat up and in the meantime i made this giant plush strawberry and oh my gosh it's adorable i'm gonna put this at the beginning of the video so you'll have already seen this but i just needed to like you know explain it because it's just so cute and i love it and i just i'm in love with it so let's go ahead and get this done we're going to cut off the tail real quick we're gonna go snip and i'm gonna kind of squish it to make it so that it goes back inside of itself there we go it's kind of a bit more hidden that way i'm now going to cut a good I, don't know, I do a lot of yarn whenever i'm doing embroidery i'm gonna move my green somewhere i should have done that before so i'm gonna cut about 18 inches of just thread. I know I'm, it's way more than I need, but it's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to cut that much. So just a good 18 inches or so. And now we're going to just take this and, and put just little seeds all over this. The way that I do this is I try to make it so that it is mostly equidistant from one another, but not quite like so. We're going to take this and we're going to kind of wiggle it as far out into the side as we can, like so. Leave a nice long tail over here so that I can hide that later. I'm then gonna start making dots. I want a dot right there. So I'm gonna push and go over and that's gonna be the top of my other dot. My other little seed. I'm gonna go, that's a little too big of a seed. We're gonna go up here because I wanna make a seed up here. I literally just kind of go all over the place with this all over and i just kind of keep going in and out and making seeds randomly placed all over this trying not to get the stuffing to pop out i tend to start from the top and i kind of give it a little tug every time that way i can also get the fluff that decided it wanted to come out with my darning needle there we go we're gonna go across here just again randomly all throughout this oh apparently we're gonna go low now that was a decision i made like that go up here beep 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 
and I made that big plushy one with the velvet plush yarn that they have at Hobby Lobby. I just have a ton of it, so that's why I used it, and also I find that that plush yarn doesn't fray as easily as all the others, which I like a lot, honestly, and uh, I think it's super cute, and I love it, I'm probably going to be putting it into a couple of TikToks. I think they're super adorable. Let's go over. Yeah, let's go over like so. And just, again, I'm randomly putting them until it feels like I've got enough of them. And I need to start going downward. So I'm going to go right there. And then I'm going to go here in a blank area. I'm going to be doing a tutorial on how to turn any amigurumi pattern into a plush pattern. So let me know if you're definitely interested in that. Because I've been kind of procrastinating in that video for a while. We're going to go there. And we're going to go here. Yeah, we're going to go here. Even though they're still pretty close. But I like how that looks, honestly. And actually, I think that's pretty much it. I think I'm done. Yeah, once I get that one done, I then try to get this to poke out as far away as I can. Try to get that string over here to hang out. Ah, as I drop it. There we go. We're going to do... Yeah, we're going to not make another thread. So we're going to put that right back where it came from. And I'm going to try to get this as far away as I can. That's good. I'm happy with that. So again, I used way too much string for this, but I would rather have too much than too little. We're also going to take this. I'm going to make another one right up here. So I'm going to go right above it like so. And then I'm going to go as far away as I can from it and pull that. And then I'm just going to cut it. I'm sure it's not the most, you know, permanent thing, but... I like how it looks and I think it does a really good job. So we're going to cut these. I like to make it a little bit, like have a little bit of tallness to it. Before I do that, I'm going to plop that back into his little body. I'm going to use this for the next strawberry that I make, which I'm going to use the tail ends from that ball on. I'm going to make one more because I think it's adorable and I think that's a perfect use to break that uh, stash up and uh, yeah that's pretty much it I love how these turned out they're super duper cute I know I say super duper cute a lot but look at these I have an entire little bowl of strawberries they're so stinking cute I especially love this one I don't know why I love this one as much as I do but I do I think they're so cute and this one looks like a grape again but that is pretty much all there is to this pattern be sure to get the free printable pdf of this while you still can if you want to support the channel again patreon we've got a tiktok if you want to go over there and see the little tiny dumb videos that i make um i'm going to be working on a dinosaur next week and a two and two-parter which i think is really really exciting i'm going to post a little video of what i did on there without the sound on tiktok for the dinosaur but it's that little song that uh dinosaur is falling in love i think is super cute thanks again for watching be sure to like subscribe and hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this and be in the note when we post more content all right until next time guys bye